Abby Sharp is the definition of a pseudo-intellectual, a person who claims proficiency in scholarly or artistic activities while lacking in-depth knowledge or critical understanding, a person who pretends to be of greater intelligence than he or she in fact is. And considering any word that comes out of Abby Sharp's mouth is typically the first result of a Google search, it's pretty much a testament to that. By all means, I think Abby Sharp is just another victim of the echo chamber that is our modern society, the conventional wisdom, what we've been told our entire lives. But that doesn't mean she shouldn't be open to being more objective and open-minded. She is a registered dietitian. Dietitians basically being pawns of the government. They are taught what to say, how to say it, aren't allowed to think outside the box. The perfect example of appeal to authority. Oh, <coughs> I have a cough. Let me go to the doctor to fix it and douse my stomach with antibiotics. The knowledge and understanding of a dietitian is built on the agribusiness that America has become. Low fat craze, meat bad, plants good. You know the typical deal. So not only is Abby's entire understanding of nutrition based on special interest funding, she is not permitted to deviate from it as it would compromise her professional credentials. If you're part of any sort of professional organization and you go against the standards, you will be quickly dealt with. Usually the revoking of your license or being shunned by that community to the point where you can no longer professionally maintain your career, make a living for yourself and your family. Before we go into Abby's personal problems with infertility and insomnia, her ignorance is causing her to blast her baby with radiation. She uses an angel care baby monitor, which when tested in this video, showed to have high levels of radio frequency radiation. This has a negative effect on any human being, especially on the biological development of a child. So Abby, I think you should wake up out of your delusional haze and stop bombarding your child with dangerous levels of frequencies. Someone like Abby would say, Oh, it's non-ionizing radiation. It's not harmful. It's not harmful. They said it's not harmful. Yeah, okay. Go sleep in your Wi-Fi prison like the rest of the zombie sheeple. Staring at their phone all day, blasting their head with AirPods. When your son is autistic and has the testosterone level of a female, I told you so. Hey, maybe he'll be as pretty as me. These frequencies can also result in poor sleep. Coincidentally, Abby has insomnia. Who would have guessed? I don't know. Sometimes I kind of feel a little bit embarrassed that I'm struggling with something that, you know, should be so easy. And I kind of feel like a little bit of a failure for that. But, you know, it is what it is. So she makes a video on this insomnia, you know, claiming she feels bad struggling with something so easy to fix. She tried a bunch of different medications, supplements, but refuses to address the clear issue. She drinks a ridiculous amount of coffee. In every single video, she can be seen with a giant mug of brown caffeine soup. Caffeine puts stress on the adrenal glands, part of the endocrine system, which results in your body's hormones not working properly. I just got to wean off prednisone and just finished my estrogen this morning. Um, and I've got one or two more days of progesterone. So I am already feeling so much better now that I'm getting off of all the drugs. And this is more of an issue in women as they are meant to carry another living person and can't deal with as much oxidative stress or nutrient depletion Completion, in this case, the specific damage to the hormonal system. This would explain Abby's low progesterone and why she had to take artificial hormones from the doctor to replace it during her infertility treatments. She chose to inject chemicals instead of quitting the coffee. You know, it says something about our modern society. People aren't willing to change how they live what they do because they've been told their whole lives that diet doesn't matter, lifestyle doesn't matter, Go to the doctor, go to the dietitian, they'll fix your issues. 
Even people in the comments of her video are giving her basic advice that she's refusing to acknowledge or listen to, whether that's because of her arrogance or unwillingness to become open-minded. I want to tell you about my infertility journey. And you would think someone who claims to be such an expert in nutrition wouldn't be suffering from infertility. Reproduction in the context of any species is simple. Nature will dictate if you are capable of reproducing. If the environment is right, you will reproduce. In the case of human beings, this means adequate nutrition and a healthy lifestyle. Basically, eating quality animal foods, making sure to get some sun, not sleeping next to a cell phone tower, and if you do these things, you will have no problem getting pregnant or, you know, in the male's case, having fertile sperm. Yet, here we have Abby Shop a condescending dietitian that critiques other people, yet is unable to get pregnant without IVF treatments. And then I immediately went back into IVF. Um, and so our first cycle was unfortunately canceled right at the end, right before transfer, because there was fluid kind of trapped in my lining, which was so devastating in itself because so many drugs and hormones and money and emotions and time goes into this. So it is really truly horrible when the whole thing gets scrapped and you've, you're excited and it's over. You're such a smart, expert, independent woman dietitian. Why are you relying on modern medicine to get pregnant? Why don't you do your job, you silly little girl? Then my next cycle, we managed to get my lining to six millimeters, which was really good by my body standards. Um, that embryo took, the pregnancy took. Um, I got to six and a half weeks and then I woke up in the morning on a Saturday morning. We were going to go have a fun day at the farm that day with some other families and I woke up to just being soaked in my own blood. This poor young lady even suffered from a miscarriage as a result of her ignorance to nutrition and health. The whole attitude around miscarriages is a problem in our modern culture. It's about comforting the woman, saying it's okay, and of course there's nothing wrong with that and it should be done, but you're literally killing a living being because you don't want to think outside of what you've been told your whole life. There is something suffering due to our modern society, our modern acceptance. So the next cycle came and we tried again. Another six millimeter lining, feeling good, that's good for me. Um, another positive pregnancy test. I was so amazingly excited. We felt like this is it, you know? We we had our, our loss, but like this is this one's for realsies. Um, and then I remember that weekend, my husband and I took my son to the science center and we were walking around the science center and I just was doubled over in such excruciating lower back pain that I could barely move. And I, and I told my husband and he was like, yay, like that's a pregnancy sign, right? Great. Like must be a strong pregnancy. It's already kicking the shit out of you. And I was just like, no, I don't, I don't think this is good. I don't think this is normal. I don't think this is a pregnancy symptom. I think this is a miscarriage symptom. And I was right. Um, we were able to go in the next day for another test and it confirmed that again, I did lose that pregnancy as well. While we were away, we decided to genetically test all of our embryos, which we had opted not to do um, in the beginning when we first did IVF and we froze them and we and we you know did the the first retrieval and everything. But anyways, what that meant was that we had to thaw the embryos, then biopsy them. They take some cells off the end of the uh, outside of the um, uh, embryo and then freeze them again, which does come with a lot of risk of damaging the embryos. And also, it was very ex an expensive procedure to do after the fact. So had I known that, I would have really just PGS tested or or genetically tested those embryos 
from the get-go. It's completely crazy. She's spending thousands of dollars, more than my 2001 Ford Taurus cost, going to doctors, testing embryos, taking all types of hormones and drugs because she doesn't want to eat a steak or some luscious, cholesterol-filled scrambled eggs. How can you spend hours a day in the doctor's office? Is she actually falling into this trap of the modern medical establishment? Or is she just putting on an act and charade for her viewers? Is Abby Sharp as silly and brainwashed as the average American? Or is she a good actor? So my doctor suggested a new protocol that basically would stimulate me to create my own estrogen, um, hoping that that would create a more favorable, 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 favorable environment for like to grow my lining. Um, this was a really long, painful, brutal cycle because there were a lot more drugs. In fact, they were all injectable drugs, which sucks. Um, and um, we had to, I was in there literally every single day for like about a month doing blood work, ultrasound. I would be waiting there for one or two hours to speak to the nurse afterwards. And then I'd wait around all day, like twiddling my thumbs, just like, I wonder what she's gonna say, what I'm the doctor wants, wants me to do, waiting for a call from my nurse or doctor to let me know next steps. This went on for weeks. It was emotionally and physically exhausting and so all consuming. I mean, to me, Abby sounds like a hypochondriac control freak, and it's understandable considering everything she does in her life is according to protocol and procedure, as opposed to objective research and critical thinking. And eventually, after weeks of this, my doctor was just, she called me up and she was like, I'm really sorry, but I think we should pull the plug on this one. So she referred me to speak to the head of our clinic, Dr. Hannum. He asked me at this meeting if I was willing to go into, you know, uncharted, untested, kind of wooey granola territory, so to speak, with him. And at that point, I was willing to do legitimately anything. So I was like, yes, take me. I'll do whatever you say I should do. Well, Abby, considering the context of the diet you're following, what you eat in a day, are you really willing to do anything? Are you willing to stop drinking three, four, five, six, seven cups of coffee that is destroying your adrenals, your female hormonal system? Are you willing to consume animal foods that promote fertility, all fields of cell growth? doesn't seem like it. I got a positive pregnancy test and everything was looking amazing. So we decided to give it one last shot, agreeing that if this did not work, that we would need to be looking more seriously at surrogacy options. So um, we did the transfer a week later. I got a positive pregnancy test and everything was looking amazing. Thankfully, Abby is finally pregnant. I mean, if you want to fall into the hands of the for-profit medical establishment in the United States, definitely follow Abby Sharp's advice. How can she set this example for her viewers? If you look at her most recent day of eating video in August of 2019, you know, she's sucking down coffee like a lunatic. Her diet is also very plant based in line with her dietitian beliefs you know she had bananas on toast for breakfast a frittata mostly composed of vegetables some granola for a snack lean fish for lunch chickpeas and nuts for a snack banana peanut butter muffins a pasta casserole for dinner and a rhubarb sorbet for dessert it's not normal to have to eat seven to eight times per day to satiate your appetite and on top of that, have all of those coffees for caffeine and energy. And this might sound healthy compared to the average standard American diet, but it's still plagued with a high carbohydrate intake, inflammatory grains, imbalanced omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, and most importantly, a lack of quality animal nutrition. Eating two eggs a day and a few ounces of lean fish is not gonna give your body the fat-soluble vitamins it needs. Indigenous cultures used to feed their women, nursing women, couples looking to conceive, elders, fatty, high-quality animal foods, fish roe, crab, 
raw grass-fed dairy, organs, bone marrow, in incredibly large amounts, over 60% of their dietary calories. And that's what it takes to be a healthy human being. You need to consume the majority of your calories from high quality animal foods in order to obtain adequate amounts of water soluble and fat soluble vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids. You're going to have to focus on pasture raised meats, wild caught fish, naturally raised eggs, and dairy. At the end of the day, Abby Sharp is likely just another special interest person promoting the agenda for the control of the food supply, just like Corn Baker wants you to shovel feedlot beef down your throat, and Rat Boy MD wants you to consume allegedly grass-fed beef from a former factory farm that works with General Mills. Not a good look. The problem is that it's not fun. If all these people are just paid actors, it gives us nothing to talk about. But that's the cold, hard truth. It's why people still support celebrities, corporations, when they know that those groups don't have the interest of the people at heart. The truth is a lonely road. And it's driven me to this craziness of, you know, continuing my YouTube channel and making a video every day to try to help the few people that are willing to listen. Uh, so if you guys would like to support my message, of improving the health of everyone uh, in a positive or not so positive way. Uh, you can please like the video, subscribe, definitely hit that bell icon. Of course, guys, please share the video. If you guys want to support me further, you can check out Frankie's Sea Range Meat. We have fresh, never frozen, local New York beef, no pesticides, agrochemicals, anything available for just the next few days, guys. So definitely check that out. Most affordable price online, frankiesearrangemeat.com. You can go to Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Definitely check out my book and get a free carnivore diet meal plan on frank-defano.com. Thanks again for joining me today, guys, and enjoy your Sunday night.